Shabro, Father James with Deacon Hank. Hey. We are talking about the main disciplines that we have set for ourselves. Do, do, do. We think we hit a low point <laughs> when we watched like our eighth Liam Neeson action movie. And you know, like those movies Taken and uh, what are the ones we watched? Surprisingly, they all follow a very similar <laughs> It has a variation line. on the same theme. And, and we were like, all right, we need to... Do something with our lives here. Our, we got to run. We got to <laughs> yeah. And then we outside. watched the newest Rambo movie, and that was pretty bad too. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> kind of brought me out of the valley a little bit. Yeah, but so I is it's funny. We we're both we finished praying one day, and we were having breakfast, and we both kind of mentioned something we're going to try to start doing. Mm -hmm. This wasn't anything that either of us prompted from the other. It just was a movement of the Holy Spirit that was going on in both of us. So I had been praying about wanting to do two things, and you had done, prayed about one thing. You want to go with yours first? Sure. Uh, there might be others too. But, yeah, the, the one for sure is to run. <laughs> Increase my cardio, basically. Hank doesn't enjoy running. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he goes a couple blocks and then... Then I feel fine. Has a heart attack. So why do, you, why do you want to run more? Um, one. Uh, as, you, then, as you're eating that <laughs> fried chicken. <laughs> Look, Tommy I'm going to start wingy. in May. It's not May. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy want wingy. Yeah. Uh, one, just for Thank my, you, Colleen and Mary, by the way, for the fried chicken. It's but, delicious. Delicious. So uh, you feel so, like you're getting a little chunky or what? I mean, there's all, always health benefits to that as well, but... Uh, you and um, some of the other priests, you like to go bike riding Yeah. on uh, long bike rides. Long bike rides, I thought a bike ride would just be a nice. Yeah, we did like riding. a 30-miler up to it's, the Botanic Gardens. It's not my definition day. of bike riding. <laughs> so uh, with that as a, a desire in my heart to just increase my cardio and my ability to run more. To so keep up with us. Huh? Yeah, oh, you want to be able to challenge keep the old going. man here. <laughs> Deacon Mad Dog Lion here. <laughs> It's feeling That's pretty nice. good after he beat me a Monopoly deal a couple times last night. Still holding on to that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and my other friends like to go hiking and such, so it's always good to just keep that up. Even though it, it would be very easy just to lay back and watch more movies. Yeah, so very good. Well, let me know when you're ready to run with me here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll let you know, folks, at the end of May how this has gone for us. <laughs> so my two things were... Yeah. First was I want to learn how to play the guitar, something I've nice. always wanted to do. I, I grew up playing the piano. I don't play the piano very well, as Deacon Hank can attest. Uh, but the guitar was something I always wanted to do. I just never got around to doing it. So uh, that's one thing. I already started doing it, and I got my – my mom has a guitar. She's a, actually a cellist, um, but she has a guitar. So borrowed that, watched some YouTube. I've already been practicing. You want to hear some of it? Sure, yeah. Close your eyes your now. Okay. Here we go. Do I'm going to play. Close yeah, close your eyes. I get <laughs> okay. nervous when right. I play in front of you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play. This is what I've learned right. so far. Row, row, row your bow. Okay. Ooh, change it up there. Keep your eyes closed. Sounds really good. How long have you been practicing? <laughs> a couple days. It's impressive. Never touched a guitar, huh? Never had touched a guitar before. Yeah, that that's actually a YouTube record. You can open your eyes. I'm kidding. Oh, I, yeah, I could play like the first couple <laughs> notes of that. That was Metallica, by the way. Um, but so playing the guitar. And uh, actually, so I like writing. You know that. I. Mm -hmm. I was telling you the other day, I, I try to write, um, in addition to like the stuff I have to write, like bulletin letters and whatnot, I, I try to write like for my own sake a book actually every year, one Very book cool. a year on some like theological or spiritual thing. So I actually want to write a novel. Ooh. So I started writing a, a novel. So That's great. Um, I'll let you know how that one goes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll be your editor. <laughs> <laughs> So why why are we doing this, and what's the spiritual lesson from wanting to be disciplined, and maybe wanting to add something to your repertoire of what you do? You had some thoughts. Sure. Uh, with discipline, there's always the you know bad assumption that discipline is just like punishment for a wrongdoing or it's a strain on yourself. But discipline can really bring out um, skills that are laying dormant within you that you're not even uh, aware of necessarily. 
and sometimes it takes being around others to call out a desire in your heart that you have. For example, I always had a desire for hiking, but it wasn't until I really found buddies to go and do that. And when I did it one time, I did fine, but I could have done so much better. And going through the discipline, the habit of training and uh, you know, going through the pain is to you know, ultimately get the gain, which is enjoying the freedom to hike more, to bike longer. No pain, no gain. Exactly. Big gains, Deacon Hank. Big, <laughs> swole Deacon Hank over there. Yeah, you have to... You have to train your body, train your mind. You have to sometimes deprive yourself in order to, to grow. And that, that goes for whether it's muscle or hiking, endurance or virtue, love, uh, sometimes a little bit of mortification or, or, or self-sacrifice opens us up to, to growth. And uh, when we discipline ourselves, our, we become more pure vessels like the Blessed Mother and the Holy Spirit can fill us up more and and motivate us. But like you mentioned patience too and kind of a constant working at something and redoing it. Yeah, think of discipline as um, you know, a real art and uh, there's a beauty to it. Uh, in a concrete image, an example of it, uh, the Japanese sword making of the katana. It's the greatest blade fashioned and it's an ancient practice that is still continuing to this day. And it's not matched or beat by any other sword making process. But what does that take? It takes months to go through. There's a whole series of building a furnace, uh, getting the fire to a certain temperature to burn down the iron to get rid of the impurities. And then a master swordsman has to diligently uh, stand by the iron and throw it into the fire, take it back out, hammer it and fold it over constantly. This repetition over and over and over again. It's grueling work. It takes a lot of patience, but the reward is um, samurai sword that can exactly, exactly slice through anything like butter. Through anything, and what we're capable of as human beings is you know sky's the limit. It's been over a month since we've been in shelter in place, and we got another almost month to go ahead of us. Yeah. So how are you doing, folks? Like, do you think you need to set yourself a, a, a discipline for May? Is it? doing something is it withholding something maybe we could watch less movies <laughs> well let's not get kidding <laughs> <laughs> less fried chicken and dessert i don't know i was doing pretty well i mean then easter came along and yeah uh, lent, definitely lent is always a great time pull-ups are getting a little harder these days <laughs> <laughs> john henry newman has a great quote he says god has created me to do him some definite service he has committed some work to me which he is not committed to another. I think that's kind of cool. And that's I would cool. say that not just for Newman, but that goes for everyone. God has created you for some definite service. He's committed you to do something that he is not committed to another. Are you doing, do you think, what God has committed you to do? And if not, or if it's possible that you're slipping from that discipline that God has given to you for his glorification... What can you do to, to get back into it? Mm -hmm. Now, running and playing guitar aren't necessarily um, going to be like God's work, but those will just put us in the, in the train of mind of trying to listen and be more attuned to how God is moving us and not just satisfying our base desires for pleasure and food. For sure, and to glorify God can be in a number of different ways through work, service, but even our bodies can glorify God because it was something that God made and put all this potential for excellence in it. So we can go out and, and train in a skill or a hobby or, or sport, and that is glorifying to God. So come uh, running with us, folks, if you see us on the streets, Rocky style. And if you are a good guitar player, uh, maybe you can come here and teach me how to play the guitar. Please. Amen. Peace. God bless.